how's this chapter of your career been so far? I, I just had a ball. I mean, you know. <laughs> what do you think about when you see yourself in that look there? I, well, it's 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 fun. Because, I mean, she's so she's such a you know she thinks she's such a tough cookie, and she's kind of not really <laughs> deep inside. But but yeah, no, it was, it was great fun. I mean, I I I never thought that you know at this point in my career I'd be you know playing the badass FBI agent, but. Hey, I'm not complaining. Hey, why not, right? Yeah. How cool is it that you're able to just do something completely different at this point in your career, too? Like, that must have been a really oh, no. cool thing. Oh, no, I've been so fortunate. I mean, I just, I, I've gotten to do so many different wonderful roles. I just am really grateful that I've never really sort of been typecast, mm. you know? Yeah, so. that's a good thing. I might be after this. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What were the toughest challenges of doing this show and playing this part? Oh, it wasn't tough at all. It was. It was. A, I had a ball. The only tough part was, I had just had stem cell injections in my knee, mm. and I got the part the next day. Oh wow! I was like, oh, this is not good timing. <laughs> this is. I'm not going to be able to run around and be, you know. Um, uh, but no, it was okay. It was okay. I but, think you pulled it off. Uh, thank you. <laughs> it was a few. It was just the first episode was a little painful, but. <laughs> So, what did you learn about yourself on this set? I mean, you've been on a bunch of different sets. What are the big things that you took away from this experience? Gosh, just, it, I mean, it was just such a great experience all around, the, everything about it. Um, you know, and, so, and I mean, just and, and to be able to work with um, Regina and, and Tim and, and Jeremy Irons was mm -hmm. a, just a delight. Uh, I, they haven't shown my scenes with him yet, but that's coming up. That's coming up, yeah. What did you like about working with Regina? What stood out? Oh, she's just kind of one of my favorite kind of actors, where she's 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 fun and she's accessible and she's smart, but she also works really really hard. You know, takes the work seriously and and uh, just available. You know, she's just a just a really cool person and and she sets the tone for yeah. the whole show. You know. Yeah, and it's it always set by the star of the show, right. you know, and it, and it trickles down. It makes it a more enjoyable experience. When yeah, and it should, it like it should always be that way. There's no, totally. there's no reason you should have a, a nightmare set that people dread going to work. It should never be like that. There's too many talented people out there that are, that are um, professional and friendly. And it's like I said recently to somebody, I said, if Meryl Streep can come on the set and be nice to everybody, <laughs> then so can you. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, if you're being a jerk, just stay at home. Yeah, no, it's yeah. life's too short. Exactly. What about Tim? What was that experience oh like Oh, my God. I, 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 I just, uh, I'm very happy to count him as a new friend, and, and uh, he's just a, <laughs> he's just a, he's a delight, and he's a wise ass, and um, yeah, he just... <laughs> He's, he's hilarious. He's also one of the smartest people I've ever met. I mean, mm. he, he, he really is. He's a real intellect, um, but enormous amount of fun. And it was that first scene that I have with him where I'm giving him such a hard time was just, it was just really a lot of fun, you know, and he's, he's amazing. He can do it all. That's awesome. So yeah. you've obviously worked with a lot of talented people. Who are the people that have inspired you the most along the way? People you've counted as friends, really enjoyed just being around? Well, oh gosh, so many. Um, I, I really have had a good experiences. I've never really been on one of those n nightmare sets. Oh, my hu my husband was on a show years ago, where he and the other leading guy literally did not speak unless they had dialogue. Seriously, wow. He said it was just That's going to work was he just dreaded every minute. And I thought, I, I oh, knock wood, I've never. I've never had that, but one of my new favorite people, though, is Kate Winslet. I'm doing a miniseries with her right now nice. in Philadelphia, and she is one of the most adorable, delightful people I've ever met in my life. That's the first time you're working with her? Yeah. That's first awesome. First time I met her, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. So, thinking about your career, what have been the keys for you? Because, like, you've done all these different shows. How have you adapted along the way and continued to grow your career? Uh, partly, I think, the fact that I started out in the theater, mm -hmm. I think. Um, I, I actually, when I first went to LA, and I wish I'd stayed in New York longer before I went to LA, but a show took me out there and then I just stayed. But uh, I, I was surprised when I first moved to LA, I met actors who had never, ever done theater. Mm. I was 
gobsmacked. I, mean, I, I didn't know such people existed. Right, because everybody was doing theater. Everybody yeah. came from the theater. Uh, I, I think there are some people in LA who they got into acting because people told them they were cute. Right. It's like I didn't know that was. That shouldn't be the prerequisite the only thing for me. To get I'm there, thinking, yeah. well, then who plays all the other parts of the not cute people? <laughs> you gotta have a lot of not cute people too. Gotta have some acting. Yeah, like chops. someone. Oh, you're really pretty. You should be an actor. Or oh, he's so handsome. He should be. He should be an actor. You know. There's like, much more. To like it. a friend of mine, her grandmother used to describe men sometimes. She'd say, "He's handsome, like an actor." <laughs> you know? It's like okay. How long were you in New York? Just three years. Hmm. I've gone back a couple of times and done shows, but. What were the best part of the theater experiences for you? Oh well, the first, well, the, the the my first one and the last one I did, which was way too long ago. I've been waiting for one to come along where I just can't say no. Mm -hmm. But um, the first one was a play called Last Summer at Bluefish Cove, which started my entire career in New York and in Los Angeles. I did it both places, and um, and then the last one I did was with Nathan Lane mm. on Broadway. I did nice. um, The Man Who Came to Dinner, which was just heaven. There's something about doing a show every single night and just having that immediacy with the crowd that can really just transform things yeah, as an Yeah, no, you, especially when you're doing a comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, it's, um, there's nothing like the, that audience response because there's nothing worse than not getting the audience response. <laughs> that could it's be sort a little like, awkward. It's sort of like being a stand-up comic, except that you're not out there alone usually. But um, Yeah, no, it, it's, um, I mean, I started working right out of college. Mm -hmm. I was very fortunate. I never had to wait tables. and. Things like that. Didn't have any of those horror stories as a no. struggling actor or anything no. like that? I feel kind of guilty about that. But. I think it's okay. It's nice that you skipped over <laughs> that part. <laughs> when do you feel like things were starting to pop for you? Like, how long did it take before you're really in the thick of things? Well, I mean, I, I you know, I started, you know, I, I, I went from New York to LA with a TV show, and then, which didn't last long at all, but then I just stayed and um, I just kept working more and more and more and more. I mean, I, I think. As much as I wish that a lot of these roles I'm doing now had come along when I was 35, mm -hmm. um, I think what would be far worse than that would be to become really big when you're 30 and then it just starts going gradually yeah, that's downhill. That's really that rough, that right? would be rough. So I feel like this sort of steady chug, 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 chug has been uh, a good thing. Do you feel like in your 30s it was just a specific type of role that you're being offered? Like, what were the roles that you were getting no, in No, because I went that? from designing women to playing um, Eileen Warnos, you know, mm -hmm. the first American female serial killer. Right, yeah. That's I'm a whole, thinking, whole different type happen? of character. So, I mean, I even asked the producer, I said, why did you think of me? Because <laughs> on Designing Women I was playing, you know, the sweetest, most gullible girl. Um, I don't know. He just, he said something like, he goes, well, I, I don't. I don't, you know, I want her to be vulnerable, too. Mm. It's like, oh, okay. What's the pull for you when you're thinking about a character or a show? What does it have to take to really push things over the top? Um, well, I guess now it would be if it was maybe a kind of part that I hadn't done before. Um, um, it, 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 it all comes down to the writing, mm. you know. Um, because there are some roles that you read them, you go, "That is just not actor proof. That's just <laughs> not good. Right. That's not good." You can tell the difference between uh, great writing and yeah. writing that needs some work. And also, sometimes it's just personal, and you don't even know what what you're responding to. But I know that when I read a part, if I don't hear that character's voice in my head right mm -hmm. away, then I know it's either not for me, or it's really my work's really going to be cut out for me. And mm -hmm. other times, you just can't hear that, and you know. But other times, just I know. I hear it, I go, yeah, I know. Like when I did um, uh, Fargo. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I read the speech that I auditioned with, I just, I, I felt like I knew everything about this woman. Mm. And I heard why she, why, how she grew up, why, she, why they named her Floyd, you know, and that, which was just sort of a personal thing, but. Um, gotcha, how about? To say. I would like to do a, I would love to do a really, uh, I would love to do a period piece. I haven't done a period yeah, piece Yeah, like what period are we talking? Oh, it could be anything. It could be it could be medieval. It could be the '40s. I mean, it's just you know, it's just it's been a while. I used to do a lot of period stuff in the theater, but um, that'd be fun. It feels like that could be the way to create new stuff too, because it's like 
we're seeing all these different versions of stuff that's already been created, but like there's plenty of history, there's plenty of books to still yes. go back into, right? Yes, exactly. We don't need to keep redoing the yeah. same thing over I'm and ready over for over. some new ideas. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you are as an actor yeah. too. You're like, all right, cool, this is a franchise, but can we try, try something a little bit different here? Yeah. 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 <laughs> How about playing Martha Logan in 24? Oh, really that, that, that was there. another highlight, that part. That was fun. Um, did you hear that voice right away, or did that take time? Uh, I think pretty much. Uh, there was a point early on um, where they had her uh, medicated and right. she'd become very calm and she was very critical of her husband's decisions and everything, but I, I found it not as entertaining. And I said, can we have her go off her meds again? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> she was a lot more <laughs> interesting. <laughs> and they went, yeah, you're right. So they <laughs> had me kind of, ooh veer off again so that was fun my, my fate well, i swear one of my favorite things about that job was gregory itson fabulous mm -hmm. actor who yeah. played um my husband we'd actually done a play together a million years oh, wow. before that so it that. was really nice to to be with him again uh my favorite thing that entire season was to describe him to people because people would mm. constantly come up and say you know, how much they liked the show, or they'd say, oh, I can't stand that guy who plays your husband. <laughs> I mean, I know he's a really good actor, but oh, he reminds me of Richard Nixon, or he's right. just so annoying, he's this, or he's that. And I'd say, let me describe the person who arrives on the set in the morning. I said, he's got spiked hair, he's got earrings, more than one, <laughs> in both ears, uh, tats everywhere, wow. you know, faded jeans, denim jacket, goes into his trailer and comes out, he's, you know. That's wild, he's President like the complete, complete opposite of complete. what you would think. Complete but that's acting right there. Is that if you can pull off a role like that, but you're coming in with tattoos yeah. and earrings, like yeah. that's really what it's all about. Yeah, we would sing little show tunes between <laughs> scenes. <laughs> what have been the biggest surprises of your journey when you think about your career? I don't know. The first thing that comes to mind is um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I suppose most actors go through this where they think. God, people still think I'm good. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's a nice thing, Whew. right? You know, don't let them fooled. Um, I, I'm, I'm just eternally grateful that I'm still working mm -hmm. so much, and because um, I know so many people that it just, you know, they worked for a while, and then it just, for whatever reason, sometimes it's absolutely inexplicable, it just kind of goes away. Um, so I don't ever take that for granted, mm -hmm. because most of those people are enormously talented. It has nothing to do with their their talent. Yeah, it can just be a really subjective thing. It's Some like thing. you get this Some part thing. on this show, and then it keeps on going, and this person yeah. doesn't get it, and then that's yeah. kind of it. And work does beget work, so I mean, that's... Yeah, totally. I so, saw the you. yeah, thank you, exactly. You've done some voiceover work too, which I was, yeah, Kim Possible, Hey Arnold back bit. in the day. Little do you like doing that stuff? Did I do Hey Arnold? I think you did. I don't remember that. I don't know. <laughs> I've I've been doing Depression Kitty. Mm, right in, on uh, um, big the Big Mouth. Big Mouth, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is a big hit with a lot of different people. Uh, yeah, Virginia King told me she goes, "Oh my God, you're Depression Kitty. That's me and my son's <laughs> favorite show." If you're a middle school kid right now, that seems to be the one. Really? Yeah. Oh no, that's awfully young to watch that show. <laughs> I know. You'd think guilty. it would be like for high schoolers. My daughter's in middle school, would never watch the show. <laughs> no, 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 no. So you like flexing the muscles when it comes to the voiceover stuff? Well, oh, it's fun. I mean, it's great fun, and you, you know, you don't have to put on makeup or hold your stomach in or anything. Not a bad deal, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually, all oh, my fantasy, I got to do, I got, I got cast in a uh, full-length Disney animated movie. Which one? I can't remember what it was called. It never saw the light never of day. Never saw the light of day. I was so excited. It was being produced by Dolly Parton, and it had an amazing cast. You know, it was um, uh, Judd, not Naomi Judd, um, Ashley Judd mm -hmm. and Hal Holbrook and... Um, just in a, Lily Tomlin, oh, wow. and uh, so we started recording a little bit, and then they said, oh, we want you to do a bigger part. I went, okay, and uh, and then all of a sudden there was a regime change at mm. Disney Animation, and it got that's, crushed, so please, that's a bummer. anybody who's watching, <laughs> I really want to do an animated movie. That's the thing, is that you can create something great, and then for whatever reason it doesn't see the light of day, and something that you didn't think was going to be big turns into a bigger deal. Uh, oh, all the time, yeah. I mean, my friend Annie Potts, mm -hmm. you know, does Bo Peep in Toy Story. Yeah. Oh, I'm pea green, <laughs> pea green, with envy. What are some parts that you wish you would have done? Anything stand out in particular? 
Oh, yes, there are two roles that spring to mind that I would have killed to have done. Let's hear them. First one is Kelly McGillis's role in, in um, Witness. Okay, yeah. Which to me is a near perfect film. I just love that movie. And uh, Sigourney Weaver's part in Galaxy Quest. Mm. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh Those are some my good ones. God. <laughs> One of the funniest movies ever. I'm yeah. thinking, how did it take somebody so long to come up with that idea? That's the other it's thing, It's hilarious. Too. Yeah, totally. It's perfect. It you really think it is. could actually, I mean, that couldn't happen like that. But I mean, you know, who knows who's getting our TV shows way out there, you know? <laughs> it's true, And right? what they think of us. What do you like the most about the industry right now with all the different spots to do stuff? Well, that. Yeah. I mean, the fact that there's so much more work. Uh, now for actors and what's really kind of cool about that not everybody might agree with me but what's kind of cool about it is that you can actually be a very successful actor and still be almost completely anonymous hmm. I mean it used to be when I started out right. that if you were on a show that was successful whether you liked it or not you were kind of famous right everybody was watching the same shows you know and you couldn't but, but now I mean you hear about people you know in shows and you think I I've never even heard of that show let alone seen it right. and it's <laughs> considered a big hit yeah it was so great you can actually make a good living as an actor and still have kind of have your an anonymity it's nice when you can just kind of be in your own private yeah world and I not mean that's with all that. really kind of amazing what were the toughest parts about being front and center and being in the limelight at certain parts of your career I haven't really had anything negative that, that springs to mind um, Except that it always seems like when people recognize me is on days when I look like hell. Mm. <laughs> like, thanks, guys. You couldn't I have had yesterday. I looked fabulous yesterday. <laughs> couldn't you? You know. Um, no, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't want to get much more famous. Mm -hmm. Just the right level of it. Yeah, cool yeah, because, you know, I, I really do. I don't think people realize how they think, oh, yeah, yeah, but they have all that money and they have this and that. And you think that can't make up for not being able to go grocery shopping or take your child to a ball game or something. I mean, right, just that, be a normal person. And that, that could make you kind of crazy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so. Jean, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Check out Jean Washman, she's great. For Jean, I'm DJ. See you next time. Book on the sit down.